the Soulish Podcast. My name is Whitney Apke, and I'm your host. On the Soulish Podcast, we're talking all about the ish of our souls, the ish being negative thought patterns, blockages, and challenges. But we'll also discuss the aha moments, how to deeply connect with ourselves and others, and the breakthroughs, big or small, that we experience in our body, soul, and spirit. We'll dive deep and talk about everything in between, of course. And I'm so excited to share my experiences and thoughts, as well as bring on guests who are thought leaders and truth seekers. It's my desire to uplift, encourage, and inspire you in each podcast. episode of the Soulish Podcast. This episode is the second to last episode in the Seven Chakras mini series, and this episode is on the third eye chakra. If you are a new listener to this podcast and or new to chakras or energy centers, I recommend checking out episode 16, which is a brief overview of all seven chakras. I've then dedicated an episode to each individual chakra so that we can dive in deeper, have a fuller and deeper and more connected understanding of the chakras and energy centers and how they connect with our bodies and what they interact with and what they control and influence. And so If there's a particular chakra that you are really interested in or you feel like you need more balance and more flow, maybe you see or feel a hindrance in one of your chakras, then those individual episodes of that specific chakra are perfect for you. And I really wanted to make these as a resource going forward so that you can use it as a reference point um, and let it be a springboard into your own research and discovery journey on the energy centers that we have. So if you've been tuning into this mini series, I hope that you have been getting as much out of it as I have. It's really, there's so much involved in these chakras and I really tried to distill the research that I've done into points and making sure that it's really concise and applicable to your lives. So I really hope that you've enjoyed it. Let's dive into the third eye chakra. I definitely have a reverence for this chakra, this energy center, because I know that it has been activated when I've needed it most, whether with a client or a friend who is experiencing deep pain, needs really deep healing that is more energetic and spiritual. It's not just mindset work. It's not just a three-step process to accepting, letting go, affirming but they need something deeper than that. And I've experienced firsthand getting visions, intuitive downloads, words of knowledge and wisdom for my clients or friends that I've sat down with and had very intense, deep conversations with and really working on helping them find freedom and balance and fresh perspective that touches what is needed to be healed. And I've really been amazed because I know that it's nothing that's coming from my personal experience, my life, or wisdom that I've gleaned from other people and their experiences. I know that it's something that is deep and is coming from energy, God, the universe, whatever you want to categorize. And I know that it's just for their benefit. It's not for me. It's for them. And so I have a real love and respect and reverence for this energy center because I've seen it work and I've seen what it can do when we're willing to be open as people for this energy center to flow. And when we have love and we're moving from a place of love, how this can then be opened and can speak and can touch somebody that needs it. And another thing that I wanted to share is it's really interesting because I came from a Christian background and I love my Christian heritage and background. It's definitely been a huge foundation for my understanding of spirituality and energy and all sorts of things. Chakras and energy centers are new to me, but I can see how, you know, church or religion or Christianity basically is putting these different things into what they are comfortable to explain or understand. But what's funny is I actually used to think that, and because I was taught that 
certain people have certain gifts. Someone has the gift of discernment. Someone has the gift of knowledge and wisdom, and they can hear things from God on other people's behalfs. And I always thought that that was specific, like either they were living a sinless life or they were just called or gifted with that ability. And what has been so awesome through doing all of this research with these chakras That has been the hugest gift to me in my understanding and again, unboxing myself as I promised in the first episode that I'm always unboxing myself from the religion that I came from and realizing things are so much more open than what religion taught me, Christianity taught me things are. And it's so cool to know that we are all designed to have intuitive downloads and visions and words of wisdom, words of knowledge for people. We just have to be open and operating from a place of love because then the universe knows it can trust us with those things for those people that we are speaking with and interacting with. And so it's just a matter of having a a heart that wants to serve other people, a heart that wants to help somebody in need, a heart that's willing to be compassionate and empathetic and wants to see this person come out of a place of pain, hurt, dysfunction, fear, anxiety. And you want to see that person restored to balance so that they can enjoy their life, whether it's a friend or family member or colleague. And so I thought that was really cool when I researched this and realized that we all have literally this ability because it's literally our energy bodies. Just the same as your body is designed and you look like your mom and your dad, genetically, we all have these seven chakras, energy centers. We all have these abilities. And it's not a matter necessarily of enlightenment. I know enlightenment is a huge thing, but I think that as long as we are wanting to be balanced for ourselves, that we are wanting to have flow throughout our whole energy centers. And we are coming from a place of wanting to serve others as well. And and for other people to experience the same thing, that is enlightenment. I think that is the whole point, is that not only do you want it for yourself, but you want it for other people. And that's where this chakra kind of comes in because it controls your ability to see the bigger picture and connect to your intuition. It's coined the eye of the soul or the brow chakra because it's located in your forehead between your eyes, but it's all about visions and intuitive downloads, and that's open with a third eye chakra. So it's not a matter of you having some huge, big spiritual awakening in order for you to access the third eye chakra. It's just a matter of you having balance throughout your whole energy center It's not about achieving some sort of high vibration or enlightenment. That comes with doing the work and grounding yourself and working through your energy centers, working through your fears, working through all of that, right? And that's really what it's all about. Hey, it's me, Wit. Did you know that I'm a certified life coach? I have been coaching and mentoring people for over a decade now, and I specialize with issues of the soul and focus on inner freedom and manifestation. I can help you realign with your values and purpose, break free from emotional blockages and negative thought patterns. You will feel motivated and encouraged to take the necessary steps to live a fulfilling life. We all need support and someone to cheer us on or hear us out, and it would be a privilege to be a part of your journey. My sessions are designed so that you are free to address whatever you feel is most important. If you are interested, simply go to WhitneyApke.com forward slash coaching and sign up for a free 30-minute call. I can't wait to work with you. The third eye chakra develops between the ages of 36 and 42 years old. It's the sixth chakra in the seven chakras and is the energy center for intuition, intellect, and reasoning. It involves our mental abilities and our psychological skill at evaluating our beliefs and attitudes. And there's a sacred truth with this chakra that is to seek only the truth. And you seek only the truth by continually searching for the difference between truth and illusion and trusting what you cannot see more than what you can see. And so that's the whole point of this too, is that you in order to share something that you're seeing that's totally random that somebody hasn't shared with you, you know nothing about, but you see this in your 
in your mind and to have the confidence to share that with that person, whether you're right or wrong, you're just seeing it and you're open to that possibility of maybe you're just sort of getting creative and imaginative with something, or that can be an intuitive download that you are receiving for this person so that they know that this was seen, you were seen, this isn't hidden, this isn't something that's, that isn't out there. You are known, you are cared about. And that's what I feel like everyone that I've ever had any kind of intuitive download, word of knowledge, had a vision for them, anytime I've ever shared anything with anyone, they instantly feel like they matter. And that is the thing that brings me the greatest joy when I access this energy center and am in flow for this person, whether client, friend, family member, doesn't matter for me, random person on an airplane, I've done it there too. I love that. I love when it hits somebody that they matter, that that wasn't unseen. It matters that that happened to them. And that really makes me feel so fulfilled that I can help somebody just by having something come up and me have the confidence, the balls to share it with them, whether I'm right or wrong, because it's not about me, it's about them. And I can be wrong, you know, like it's, it's not that I'm always right either. And that's how you kind of develop that gift of sight is you, you navigate it and you learn what is maybe probably you just having some imagination versus you getting something and you know the difference and you have to be willing to to go out there and get your feet wet and try. That doesn't mean that you start going around and just like saying all these different things to random people. You definitely have to know that you are in flow, that you are sitting with yourself, that you are connected to source, the universe, God. And it's not about you. It's about that person. And if you come from a place of love and care that you want to just help this person, that's when it happens. And that's when it's so powerful, so instrumental in that person's journey and in that moment for them to come out of that place of darkness that maybe they're they're in. So I love that this third eye chakra is all about seeking only the truth because it's all about that difference between truth and illusion, what we see, but what is actually true. Because a lot of what we see in our perspective on things in life is not always true. So that's why the third eye chakra is that energy center of not only intellect and reasoning, but also intuition. And it really helps you elevate your sight into maybe things that you don't see immediately, but that are wisdom, that are foresight, that are thinking long or seeing long into the future of what one decision could cost you or give you. So I love that sacred truth. I definitely resonate with it. The organs that this chakra influences is the brain, nervous system, eyes, ears, nose, pineal gland, and pituitary gland. The negative effects that you can experience if this chakra or energy center is blocked is brain tumors, hemorrhages, strokes, neurological disturbances, blindness, deafness, full spinal difficulties, uh, learning disabilities, and seizures. The emotional issues that you can experience if this chakra is blocked is difficulty self-evaluating. You have trouble and you can't see the truth, even if it's right in front of you or presented to you. You have repressed intellectual abilities, feelings of inadequacy, lack of openness to the ideas of others, inability to learn from experience, and lack of emotional intelligence. There are a couple of really good self-examination questions that I would like to present to you that have really helped me see and kind of filter through any kind of hindrances or blockages that might be in my third eye chakra or energy center that would keep me back from being able to have intuitive downloads, visions, and be in flow for my clients, friends, for myself. And so I wanted to present these questions to you and kind of chat a little bit about them. The first question is, do you often interpret the actions of others in a negative way? If so, why? This question is really important because, again, it goes back to seeing the truth and interpreting the actions of others in a negative way consistently 
that nobody will do anything good or everybody has something wrong with them or they're out to get you, that means that you need some healing, right? And so that can definitely be an indicator that you are not open to seeing the truth or seeing things how they really are. The second question is, what negative patterns continually surface in your relationships with others? This is a great question to ask yourself and to kind of sit and reflect on different arguments or things that have been brought up by other people that you trust, that you've been in a long-term friendship or relationship with, because friendships, relationships are the greatest mirror that we can see patterns, different perspectives, tendencies, leanings towards different things, and it can be a great opportunity to kind of realize maybe some areas that you need to grow, unblock, remove, shed, hindrances, fears, insecurities, anything that would hold you back. The third question is, what beliefs do you continue to accept that you know are not true? And this is really big, and I've seen this even in like the Christian world, church, where even within church, people have ideas, beliefs that they hold on to that are super deep rooted in fundamentalism in the religion. Maybe it's something that comes from their childhood, the way that they were raised. For those that are unwilling to take a step back and look at their beliefs and see what is truth versus illusion, even though it's something that they grew up with or that was instilled in them through their mom or their dad or their pastor or spiritual leader, it doesn't matter. You have to be always willing to examine your beliefs, examine your thoughts, examine your feelings, and see where they lie, whether it's truth or illusion. If you're unwilling to do this, you're going to experience blockages and hindrances, and you're also not going to be able to access different parts of yourself and connect with other people in a deeper, more meaningful way. The fourth and final question that I would like to present to you in order for you to have kind of like some self-examination and see if there's any blocks or hindrances in your third eye chakra energy center is what attitudes do you have that disempower you? This is maybe one of the biggest ones that I feel like I recognize maybe even on a daily basis because it could be a thought, it could be a reaction to something, it could be a feeling that comes up as I'm hearing the news, it could be anything, right? But it's a great question to ask yourself of what attitudes do I have that disempower me? And that may be even with work. Maybe with work, you kind of, the switch goes off in you and you feel like you're not smart or capable or as good as these other people. You feel that sense of competition in it. It actually feels disempowering because you don't think that you're as valuable or add as much value as other people on your team. So that would be definitely an attitude that you click into when you clock into work that you would need to leave at the door and not take in to work with you, that you would need to recognize before you even walk through those doors and sit down in your desk and make sure that you are coming from a place of, I intend to add value here because I gain value from working here. I can sustain myself, my place of living food on the table. So I want to add value to this company and I will, and I am. And if you come at work every day with that, of what can I do here to add value to this company that feeds me, clothes me, shelters me, then you will have automatically a totally different perspective, a totally different reaction when things don't quite go as planned or your way or come up suddenly that may cause anxiety and stress, but instead you'll have a completely different internal response if your attitude is adjusted before you enter the door. So that's a great question to ask, and I hope that you got so much out of this episode, and I hope that you're getting so much out of this series if you've continued through, and thank you so much for listening. I am posting on the Instagram 
a Q&A so that, that way I can answer any questions you have about all seven chakras. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that you have a great rest of your week. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I look forward to next week. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Soulish is not only a podcast, but a community where we can relate to each other and support each other in our soul journeys. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at I Am Soulish.